hey, look, no one's perfect. Even the best baseball players strike out with the bases loaded. The best golfers, sometimes they three-putt with the tournament on the line. So if you feel like you come up short in the bedroom sometimes, it's perfectly okay. If it's bothering you, there are options. Go to GetRoman.com slash FBN15 now. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward and discreet. And getting started, that's simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash FB in 15 and complete an online visit. Take care of ED without leaving home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a doctor and take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash FB in 15 now to get $15 off your first month. This is a straightforward way to take care of your ED. GetRoman.com slash FB in 15. Get started now to save $15 on your first month of treatment. On today's Fantasy Baseball in 15, we'll break down a big night for catchers and yet another deep start from Cal Quantrill. Like death and taxes, Dodger's been a Dodger. I have not had uh, three cold brews yet. It works great in a fantasy. I'm just glad I am not at the dentist. Fantasy Baseball in 15. On The Athletic. Welcome to Fantasy Baseball in 15, presented by Tops. Check out Tops Project 70, celebrating 70 years of Tops baseball cards. Michael Beller, Al Melchior here with you on Wednesday, September 22nd. Let's get into the news and the notes, Al. Cody Bellinger to the IL with a non-displaced rib fracture. Could still return when eligible on September 28th, but man, what a lost season for Cody Bellinger. This has been A.J. Pollock will be activated for the Dodgers on Thursday. Chris Bassett, great to see this, will start on Thursday against the Mariners. Jacob DeGrom threw 20 pitches off a mound on Tuesday. We'll have at least one more session. Could pitch for the Mets this season. My question would be why, but I don't run the Mets. <laughs> Noah Syndergaard uh, could, er, will make a rehab appearance Excuse me for AAA Syracuse on Wednesday. Seth Beer will undergo a shoulder surgery on Thursday. Garrett Whitlock going to the IL with a pectoral muscle issue. Uh, Tyler Rogers got his 13th save of the season at San Diego. He and Dominic Leone each have a save since Jake McGee went on the IL last Friday. Are you doing anything with these guys, Al? I don't think so. I suppose maybe in leagues where uh, you just you know need saves, and at this point maybe you're just you're so tight in the standings that you know an extra save would do something for you. Maybe Dominic Leone is is somebody to target because my assumption was that Tyler Rogers would be getting pretty much all the save opportunities with McGee out. Um, so maybe a little bit of a timeshare with the little time that is left. Cesar Valdez was called up and then promptly blew a save in the 10th inning at Philadelphia. Luis Severino made his first appearance since 2019. He pitched two scoreless innings in relief against Texas. In leagues where he's sitting out there, Al, is there any needle moving he can do over the last nine days of the season? I think uh, probably not. Maybe the the best case scenario is he could help in in saves and holds leagues if he does wind up in some hold situations. Uh, I'm not even sure... We'll see Severino there. I mean, I think this mm-hmm. is just uh, an attempt to just, you know, see how well he does and probably put him in, in low uh, leverage situations. So we'll, you know, watch, uh, see how uh, he's used the next time out. All right, let's get into the Tuesday standouts here. Al Manny Machado went three for five with a pair of home runs. He now has 26 bombs on the season. Very disappointing finish to the year for the Padres, unless they're able to pull off some sort of miracle over this last week and a half. But uh, feels like the sort of team that can bounce back very quickly with all the talent that they have next year. Manny Machado, obviously chief among them. Just a quick thought on early thoughts on 2022 for Machado, Al. Uh, I think that uh, you know he's found his level. Uh, and that maybe feels like a strange thing to say, uh, but it seems like not that long ago that people had doubts about how the power would translate to the NL and, and to Petco Park. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, pretty much the Machado that you're seeing this year is, is the Machado you can expect going forward with, a, you know, a good, if not great batting average and a, a shot at 30 home runs. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think there's any surprises anymore with him. Now, how about Victor Reyes going four for four with a double against the White Sox? What sort of value can he provide the rest of this year, Al? P- 
probably not much. I, I've been disappointed that Reyes hasn't had more of a chance to play in 2021, uh, but understandable with the position that the Tigers are in and, and the Tigers, you know, having a pretty nice second half. So they're given, uh, you know, some some other players a look and looking ahead to 2022. But, you know, maybe down the stretch, particularly with Derek Hill out, maybe Reyes does get a little bit more playing time. So uh, for for batting average and perhaps for stolen bases in deep leagues, Reyes would be a nice add. To Brian Hayes going three for five with his eighth steal of the season against the Reds. Another guy who dealt with a lot of injury early in the season. Uh, was that opening day that he got hurt and then missed a ton of time early uh, on? And then, uh, you know, uh, obviously with that lost time, didn't put up the sort of season we were hoping for. But it'll be an interesting guy for sure in 2022 to take a look at. Tommy Edmond, two for three with a walk and two steals. Now up to 27 steals. On the season for Tommy Edmond, uh, Cardinals appear headed for the playoffs. It's been a great second half for that team. And Tommy Edmond, Al, chief among the players who have uh, had a big hand in making that happen. Yeah, and not necessarily the player that you would have uh, you know, thought would be playing that kind of role looking back in March and April. But, um, you know, earlier in the season, really, uh, and really even overall, not not very many strikeouts. Earlier in the year, it was translating into a higher batting average. But, uh, you know, those steals, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, really blowing away his previous uh, career best of 15. So, uh, you know, right there, there's an impact plus pretty consistently hitting near the top of the order. So maybe a little bit of a surprise contributor in the runs category as well. I think, you know, we've just talked about a couple of players in Hayes and Edmund that are going to be kind of difficult to project for next year because, you know, the, this, you know, possibly 30 steal season for Edmund, mm-hmm. if he keeps this up, uh, is, you know, is this something that we, we should wait heavily or, or, you know, discount heavily going into next year. Hayes has lately been hitting very well, but still not for much power. So uh, what kind of player do we expect him to be going forward? I think he's going to be a very, very difficult one to figure out. Well, how about J.P. Crawford? Three for five with his ninth homer of the season, his 33rd double. He's got 82 runs on the year. Obviously, there's some lineup and uh, team context that has something to do with that. But still, it's been you can't say it's not been a successful season for J.P. Crawford with the numbers that he's put up this year. Another guy who I think could be pretty interesting to look at next offseason. I agree. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a bit of a trend here talking about uh, Edmund and now Crawford players that are hitting at the, the, you know, top of the lineup or near the top of the lineup consistently and scoring a lot of runs. And that maybe I'm just talking about myself here, but uh, (laughs) I think that does get overlooked. I certainly overlook it more than I should. And uh, yeah, Crawford, not not much power at all. Um, The batting average is, is decent. But, uh, you know, just the the run scoring alone, like you said, that team context, uh, it's something to keep in mind with him going into next year. Three guys who I just want to run through really quick here. Al, you can let me know if you think uh, any of these guys is worth taking a look at for uh, the rest of the season. Phil Gosselin hit his seventh homer. Uh, he's hitting 267 and 330 plate appearances on the year. Nick Gordon hit a home run as well in a three for five day against the Cubs. He's now up to three homers and nine steals with that combo meal he had uh, in Chicago. And then Trace Thompson, it's as though he's like, man, NBA season's about to start. Clay's going to be back in the news. I got to make sure everyone remembers he's got a brother. He hit a homer. Homer's in back to back games now any of these three guys uh, showing up for you on the fantasy radar for this last week and a half I think all of them to some extent I think uh, of the three Nick Gordon is probably the one that maybe you're thinking about if not 12 team leagues maybe 13 14 team leagues because of uh, particularly the steals uh, potential that he gives you and a little bit more playing time lately Goslin we've talked about uh, throughout the season and he continues to hit in the middle of the Angels order I know that you know that's probably right now the worst lineup to be hitting in the middle of <laughs> but you know you prorate that out you said he's you know got 330 plate appearances you know you prorate that that out. He's got 43 RBIs. I mean, over a full season, that yeah. you know, would put him in the That's 80s good. range. Mm-hmm. So even on a team like the Angels, uh, you know, Gosselin is, is turning that into some value. And Thompson, you know, deeper leagues, I think the playing time is there now. So, uh, you know, certainly NL only, uh, he's, he's a must add. Nothing really to do with these next couple of guys because they are on teams and you're playing them every single day. But worth noting, uh, as we said off the top, a big day for catchers. JT Real Muto uh, hit a uh, his 25th double, his fourth triple, stole a base against the Orioles. That's just not your typical catcher line. Not many catchers going to hit a triple and steal a base in the same game. JT Real Muto doing that on Tuesday. Wilson Contreras went two for three with his 21st homer of the season. Austin Nola 
two for four with his second homer of the season. And we've also got Nick Fortas going two for four with his second homer of the season. And I guess those last two guys, Nola and Fortas, could be guys who, you know, maybe there is something actionable to do with the remainder of the year. Well, Nola certainly, I think, out of the four, you know, this is uh, the the one catcher that you uh, should be in more leagues. Uh, he's not hitting for much power yet. Uh, you know, not much time, obviously, to turn that around. But maybe we see a little bit more from him over the the remainder of the season here. But hitting for average, and you know, that's not something you, as you said, you know, with Real Muto, that's not something you always see with catchers. A lot of times, it's you know, twenty homer power, but they're hitting two ten. So uh, Nola, at least so far, giving you a little bit of a different profile. Fortis is interesting, just because he's five for nine so far for the Marlins. It's getting called up a couple of homers. Uh, he hit seven home runs all year long in the minors split between double A AA and triple A. So I'm not sure where the power is coming from, but we see this every year, right? Michael, we see this. Somebody gets called up and turns it on in September, uh, maybe with games not meaning as much against certain opponents. And uh, the, the other weird thing about this is the Marlins are carrying four catchers right now. And that's even with Jorge Alfaro on the IL. So I don't understand that, but uh, in any event, maybe NL only Fortis is somebody you pick up and, and you watch, uh, see how he does the next couple of days uh, in some deeper leagues. Let's flip things over to the pitchers here quickly. Al, quick Cal Quantrill, a, a really nice start. Six and two-thirds, gave up one run on seven hits, walked two, struck out six. Six straight starts of at least six and two-thirds innings, and that's going to play in fantasy leagues, Al. It really is. And Quantrill is a case where uh, I think if you go back and you listen to uh, analysis that I do on him, I feel like I waffle a lot, to be honest, because I still don't really know what to make of of Quantrill and this recent string of his. And uh, I think he's got more appeal than, say, somebody like a, a Willie Peralta, who often goes similarly deep into games, but doesn't have quite the same strikeout appeal. But Quantrill's not you know, exactly a strikeout pitcher himself either. So I'm not sure how he's doing this, but when somebody does do this for a, a length of time, I think you kind of have to give them credit and kind of do, you know, do your own work and see <laughs> how they're doing it and try to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, that'll be something to look look at going into next year because Guantra has the the possibility of maybe being a really big bust next yeah. year, and maybe this has just been a lot of luck, or you know, maybe uh, a, a hidden gem if we can we can find the secret sauce. Josh Rogers and DVR's guy Jake Woodford both coming through with big starts on Tuesday for Rogers. It was one run across seven and two thirds innings. He's now down to a two one six ERA for Woodford. It was five shutout innings, two hits, one walk, and five Ks against the Brewers. You buy neither of these guys in their remaining starts for the season. Uh, definitely Woodford. Yeah, DVR had a great call there with the two start week for him. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, a, a good enough pitcher that you would want to use him in a two start week, not necessarily somebody that you would stream for every single start, but, uh, you know, looks solid the rest of the way, not buying into Josh Rogers yet. It's just been four starts for him. He does have a 2.16 ERA, but he's got a lot of strand rate and BABIP help on that. So, and also a very favorable opponent in the Marlins, uh, on Tuesday. So, uh, take it a pass on Rodgers going forward. Neat thing, too, with these two starts, it was Rodgers versus Rodgers and Woodford uh, versus Woodruff. I thought you were going to say Woodford versus Reserve, but uh, that would be a very strange last name. So <laughs> we can just <laughs> move straight on from that one. You're a busy guy, so stop thinking about what to wear and just embrace the radically efficient Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. The Daily Wear System is a selection of clothes rooted in smart design made with performance fabrics and built to work together. From breathable t-shirts and polos to stylish button-ups and shorts, underwear and beyond, Mack Weldon makes it easier for you to dress for work, leisure, and play, or wherever your summer or fall take you. Love Mack Weldon's products. I can promise you, if you do go with this daily wear system, they are going to send you stuff that you love and stuff that is incredibly comfortable and as versatile as they promise, regardless of what we're talking about. The t-shirts, the polos, the button-ups, the shorts, the underwear, the pants, whatever you're looking at, Mack Weldon's going to have you covered and comfortable in the right situation. Situations. Buy some time this summer with the Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash MLB15, 15 spelled out. Enter the promo code MLB15. That's MacWeldon.com slash MLB15. Enter the promo code MLB15 for 20% off. Mack Weldon, radically efficient wardrobing. Let's get into the Wednesday streamers now here, Al. We've got a decent crop of guys to choose from. Joe Ryan gets the Cubs in Chicago. Eliezer Hernandez pitching at home against the Nationals. Ronaldo Lopez in the White Sox in Detroit taking on the Tigers. Carlos Hernandez. And in Cleveland, we got Brett Anderson at home against the Cardinals. And Taylor Hearn in New York against the Yankees. Who do you like out of this group? 
Uh, I would say all of the first four, Ryan, Hernandez, Lopez, Hernandez, uh, both Hernandez's, uh, Eliezer and Carlos, uh, Brett Anderson. Normally I would, would like this all right, but you know, he's coming off of that IL stint uh, after getting drilled in the shoulder by a comebacker. So don't know how deep he's going to go or necessarily uh, what percentage of his best he'll be in this one. Taylor Hearn at the Yankees. I just don't like the the downside potential in that one. So uh, among Ryan, the two Hernandez's and Lopez, I like Ryan the best at the Cubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then beyond that, I, you know, I like uh, the matchup for Carlos Hernandez here. So I'd say those are the, the two top picks for today. Something to keep in the back of your mind if you do end up going with Ryan. I don't think it's going to be a problem by game time, but as Al and I are sitting this, uh, I'm just a couple of miles away from Wrigley Field. Ugly, ugly day. It's raining a little bit. It's cold. It's overcast. And I think the rain's going to go away according to the forecast. So actually, that could ultimately play to Ryan's favor because this is not shaping up to be a good day to hit in Chicago. Let's wrap things up with the prospect spotlight here, Al. Stephen Kwan, an outfielder in the Cleveland system, did very well for himself at the AA Akron level. 337 with seven homers and 221 plate appearances. Bumped up to AAA Columbus where he has basically... Picked up right where he left off in Akron, 328, three homers, just five strikeouts, five strikeouts in 78 plate appearances. You love to see that from a young hitter. Have a feeling Stephen Kwan is someone who we're going to be talking about at the major league level next year. And then we can bump on over to the Kansas City organization where we find John Heasley, a a right-handed pitcher, a 3-3-3 ERA with 120 strikeouts in 105 and one-thirds innings. At AA Northwest Arkansas, debuted against Seattle last Friday. So a couple of guys to keep in mind, not guys who are going to make much of a fantasy impact or really any fantasy impact this season, but guys that we certainly could be talking about early on next year, maybe even in drafts, depending on the way their springs unfold. Keep those names in the back of your mind, Stephen Kwan and John Heasley. And always, thanks for keeping fantasy baseball in the front of your mind when you kick off your mornings. Al and I will be back with you on Thursday. Until then, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. This episode is brought to you by BetMGM. Sign up today with BetMGM, the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic, and get a $1,000 risk-free first bet. Plus, get a free three-month subscription to The Athletic. Just sign up at BetMGM.com slash TheAthleticPod, that's P-O-D, to take advantage of this special offer from the kings of sportsbooks. That's BetMGM.com slash TheAthleticPod, P-O-D. New customer offer, paid in bonus dollars. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Cue the disclaimer. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, and Virginia. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. In Tennessee, call or text the red line at 800-889-9789. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Promotional offer not available in Nevada.